some of the themes in the early revelations were that the Quran challenges the Quraysh to look for greater meaning in their lives. So for instance, we see, did you think we created you just for fun and that you wouldn't be returned to us? Now, again, these are translations. It sounds far more eloquent in Arabic. Um, another, we did not create the heavens and the earth and all in between them merely for play. We did not create them except for a truthful purpose, but most of them do not know. Meccan, uh, the Meccan views uh, are also challenged. So it says, then say there is nothing beyond our lives here, uh, here on earth, nor will we ever be raised to life again. So this is quoting the Meccans. So the Meccans are challenging the prophet. And this is, the Quran is in a dialogue with them. Um, uh, and what this means is the Quran was revealed over 23 years piecemeal. So it didn't come like in one go, but over 23 years. And for Muslims that's significant because in looking at when certain verses were revealed, one can also, among many of the important um, uh, importances of understanding when a verse was revealed, is that you can figure out what was happening in the life of the Prophet. So you see that the early verses revealed in the first few years of his prophecy um, address certain topics and the verses revealed later in uh, Muhammad's prophecy address other types of topics. And then trying to examine and think about how those themes differ and evolve over time helps us also to see historically how this develops. Did you guys have any session on the Quran? Yeah, and you probably then heard about how the Quran was revealed piecemeal over 23 years, not in one go. Okay, all right, good. Yes? Um, I was realizing you were talking about the curate, curate. <coughs> Quraysh, yeah. and sort of these other tribes is the word we've been using. Yes, yes. And I'm just wondering what we mean by tribe. Like, is it a kinship relationship? Is it like a clan, or is there a geographic yeah. component? Yeah, so... Um, both. So you have uh, tribes and clans all over Arabia. Mm -hmm. And um, for Arabs at this time, and you know, uh, until much later, uh, tribal connections were extremely important. And um, it was your tribe that would defend you. It was because of tr uh, fear of tribal retaliation that um, people, if someone wanted to harm another person, they would think about the retaliation of that person's tribe. So, you know, they didn't have a police force that you could call, you called your tribe. Um, so having those affiliations was really important. Uh, in Mecca, the most dominant clan is the Quraysh. Uh, they're the sons of Hashim, Banu Hashim, so there are other clans as well. The Prophet Muhammad himself was from the Quraysh clan. Um, and uh, the Quraysh sometimes, oftentimes in the, in the slides, I'll use it interchangeably to mean the, um, the rest of the pagans of Arabia, so the different cl uh, clans or tribes. But the tribe of Quraysh uh, in the beginning was generally against the Prophet Muhammad. It, similar to the way um, Prophet Abraham, uh, his family and his community were against him when he first started uh, preaching the message of monotheism. And then he eventually left uh, because, uh, because of persecution there. Yeah. Membership. I am a member of that tribe because I, my parents were. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's a lineage thing. Yeah. And different lineages tend to dominate different geographic areas. Yeah. Another um, theme is uh, the Fatiha, which is the opening chapter. In inter, uh, interscriptural studies, people often compare this to the Lord's Prayer. So this is a prayer that Muslims recite in each of the five daily prayers, in each unit of those prayers, so at least 17 times a day. Uh, Praise be to God, Lord of the worlds, the compassionate, the merciful, and the master of the day of judgment. 
to you alone do we render service, to you alone do we look for aid. Guide us on the right path, the path of those whom you have favored, uh, not of those who have earned your anger, nor of those who have gone astray. That's the first chapter of the Quran. Other themes are a return to Abraham's creed of monotheism. Say to them, he is only one God, God the eternal absolute. He neither begets nor was he begotten, and there is nothing equal to him. So this is another really important, um, it's a short verse, uh, chapter from the Quran that's often repeated. 